drive is going to be important in the first five minutes of this game. You know, don't blow it all out there in the first couple minutes. Pace yourself. Yeah, their first practice back together was on Thursday as we get you the starting lineups brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee. And even though Connecticut is not with James Book Knight, they do have Andre Jackson who is coming on. He'll make his first career start here. Feel, especially for a young player. Mike Stevens, Lamar Simpson, Wally Ritecki on the whistle. And we actually have fans here, just under a thousand. And off we go with a Big East battle starting off your Saturday Fox Hoops triple header. Key early for UConn is communication. Don't wait for the, the, the most open shot to happen. You almost have to force your will a little bit. I like that shot, even though he misses it. You got to stay aggressive. UConn is the second slowest team in terms of pace in the Big East, just ahead of Butler. Too many athletes on this team to continue to play slow. But they are a great rebounding team and an early offensive board. And then the left hand hook for Adama Sonogo, who's really coming on, Donnie. So what happens? They don't drain the clock. They take an, a, a three pointer by Jackson, offensive rebound uh, by Martin, and then next thing you know, Sonogo. They have to make themselves known down low and for Xavier their passing their unselfishness really has been a staple when they played has been a staple nice move inside that's their leader the senior Paul Scruggs has done such a wonderful job Brandon of reinventing himself I really feel the first two and a half years or so of his career he was trying to figure out who he was what kind of player he was almost competing against his own teammates for time well this season he has just been special he's a point guard and done a great job leading this team off the mark for Tyrese Martin so Xavier the practice Thursday and yesterday the only times that they've been together as a team since that game against Butler January 30th but doesn't seem to be affecting of Adam Hunkel from the corner and who's it from Scruggs again probing a little bit and you have to respect Scruggs if you're a defender because he's not just a passer even though he's doing a great job as a facilitator this season he can get his own as we saw in that first bucket of the game for Xavier. Yeah, but six assists a game. You're right. He's been distributing at a high level Connecticut so good on the glass. They struggle to shoot the ball from deep. They want to pound it inside That's what coach Hurley said, but here the shot rejected with three to shoot And after the loss Wednesday at Providence Danny Hurley saying it was demoralizing both teams needed that game They outplayed us. We have to respond here this afternoon Gaffney and again the three-point woes they've been a story all season especially without book night and another miss from deep and Travis Steele he just said I'm curious to see how we respond and you mentioned the, the fasting analogy Donnie but he said I just hope we don't come out here and turn the ball over a lot what, what, he got a little air guitar there? you see that what, yeah what's going on there we know what he was doing in his downtime <laughs> He's getting his next play set up, but the three is off the mark from Freeman. That looked like a Tar Hero to me a little bit. <laughs> One of the best. I mean, you, you won't find many guys that are just willing to give you all in any other time than Travis Steele. And always a joy to talk to, and here is team getting the takeaway. Here's Nate Johnson, statistically the best three-point shooter in the nation, and right on cue. What makes him so special is you see there he can pull up off the dribble, but he may be just as good of a catch and shoot guy as well. You know, usually you get one or the other in college basketball. Xavier starting three of four from the floor. UConn one of five. Off balance and off the mark from Martin. Knocked out of bounds. We head the other direction. What a great start for Xavier here in the first three plus minutes. Yeah, Scruggs to Kunkel in the corner, and that's Tyrese Martin just overhelping. You respect Scruggs on the drive, too much space, and then no space at all. That shows you how quick Johnson can get that thing off. 52% from three for the Gardner Webb transfer. Nate Johnson this year, as I said, best in the entire country. Here's Scruggs down the lane, somehow curls it around up top, and Fremantle drives, scores it, and the blocking foul. It's a 10 0 run. Xavier Musketeers. Too bad you couldn't get half an assist because that was really set up by the Scrubs drive. 
and he hangs with the offhand. Look at this. He draws three, maybe even four, swings it out with the left, and now Martin is trying to catch up. Sonogo steps in late. Fremantle, chance for an and one. The native of Teaneck, New Jersey, makes it an 11-0 run. Now this is what Danny Hurley feared, getting down early on the road here in front of fans, which feels a lot different when you're used to having nobody in there cheering. Three up top, Jackson, and maybe that will help calm UConn. You know, Jackson was dealing with an injury of his own recently this season, so he, he's trying to figure out the timing, but it's awesome that he can get back in this game as a starter, already taking a couple of shots, and he looks like he's just playing free, not thinking about it. That's how you have to play this game. Yeah, just his third game back from that wrist, wrist injury. Open triple, Fremantle, another one. Just you see the issues that Sonogo has trying to guard Fremantle. You know, it's a, it's a hard guard. Sonogo, he can move, he can run, he has terrific feet, but not comfortable guarding on the perimeter. Xavier, three of four from outside the arc, up 14 to five early. It's a great job driving, drawing too. Look at all that space, goodness. Never been able to get into rhythm, but through all of this, when they've restarted, they've shot 54% against Marquette, 51% against Butler, and so far, five of six here in the early going today. It really has been a staple of theirs all season long, moving the basketball, no one trying to do it on their own. And look at that again, it's just another, even if Carter wanted to shoot that, he was wide open, it was a, a good shot. 18 and a half assists per game to your point Donnie number five in the entire country Little bully ball inside but a travel on Fremantle. It's a better matchup for UConn with Fremantle That's a tough guard for Sonovo as we talked about before the break But Whaley can move his feet. He can guard on the on the perimeter. He can stretch you know, Carter out to the perimeter, so it, it, that's a, a better matchup defensively for UConn. See if they stay with that. So far, UConn just two of eight from the floor. Baseline jumper, and a little too much from Whaley. Isaiah Whaley, one of two players, he and Tyrese Martin, who both have been battling ankle injuries and were questionable coming into today, but obviously they are both out and good to go. Driving inside, left hand up, no good for Colby Jones. And this is where UConn has to shine. In transition, you have numbers, you cannot hold that ball up. Great feed, R.J. Cole right underneath to Sonogo. I mean, that's where when you lose your best player, 20 points a game, your you're all-league player and, and your NBA guy, that's what you have to do. Mindless basketball, which means no thinking, push it, use your, your God-given abilities. Down inside again, hook shot, Fremantle is confident, he's got eight already. Averaging a team best 15 points and eight rebounds a game. See, I like that shot from, from Whaley with 16 seconds on the shot clock. And now what happens with UConn is now they're grinding to get a shot and a tough one with that shot clock under 10 seconds. It, it's hard to, one, play offense like that, but it's also easier to defend because you know gets under 10, everyone stands your ground defensively and something good's going to happen if you're Xavier, and it does. Well, and with that slower pace, Travis Steele said, oftentimes, to your point, they will sit in a set for 10 to 15 seconds with just the ball around the arc before they initiate it. And that's why UConn, they want this game in the 60s, but, Donnie, I think Xavier would like it in the 70s or 80s. Yeah, and I, I always have this question, you know, when I talk to coaches, players, is it easier to slow a team down to your pace or, or, or to speed them up? You know, which one's harder, which one's easier? And... You know, we, we had a game a few weeks ago, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Illinois showed it was easier to speed them up. <laughs> well, here's speeding them up. That's a miss at the rim by Jalen Gaffney. Gaffney slow to recover, so a five on four, but a travel underneath, the break for UConn. They got to convert on these opportunities. Yeah, there's a small 
margin for error with the team like UConn when they don't score a lot and Book Knight is out. Those you, you know he's gonna want that back. Those are tough. Hey, those are the ones you just say, look, I'm up, let me just go dunk this thing just to make sure it's in. And a warm hand for Deontay Miles as he comes in, the freshman. His last game December 9th due to a hip injury, but Travis Steele said he's been practicing great. Curious to see how he responds today. Look, he just has to keep it simple. He's a rim protector, runs the floor great, has, again, really good feel, knows where to be on the glass. There's a three-pointer from the top of the arc. Welcome back, a cook, a cook. He's been out since January 18th with a shin injury. And we talked about it in the open. They have talent, UConn. They have athletes. There's no way they should just be waiting for James Booknight to come back. They have enough to win games. They just have to be confident and believe in one another. It really is that simple. Every guy on the floor for UConn right now has the ability to score the ball and to get themselves to the rim. They just have to believe it. With Jackson back and now a cook, a cook, and how Sonogo is coming on. Johnny, you're right. There, there's a lot of pieces out there. Look, a cook, a cook, Jackson, they've been hurt. And that was a part of their, with James Booknight, that was a part of their core, you know, their future. And, and, you know, you get hit like that and guys don't play. A lot of coaches around the country have felt that where you get your best players hurt. Next thing you know, you're struggling. I, the coach before, Dan Hurley, Kevin Ollie, dealt with that for two seasons where there were a lot of his top players hurt. And it's just not a fun thing to go through. And UConn's feeling that again. At least they got a couple back. Well, they are a great offensive rebounding team, best in the league. And an offensive rebound here leads to a three from R.J. Cole. Well, and, and one of the situations where their offense was spaced out, so it got under 10, but they got a good shot. A little ball watching for Xavier that possession. And Travis Steele was really worried about the offensive glass. Up and under, nifty move, everything but the finish for Carter. Awesome closeout by a cook. Think about it. You, you got guys who have been hurt. It's, it's really hard to, to get up and down, yes, but defensively, to get your feet underneath you without fouling, especially a guy as long as a cook. That was a, a great closeout. Here's a cook. He hit the three a moment ago. Now driving it inside. Welcome back. A cook, a cook. I love that Dan Hurley's allowing these guys to play a little bit. This is a team that has played very safe, very guarded without James Booknight. They fought their way back into this game. They are playing some free spirited basketball right now an 8-0 run what a response after xavier's 11-0 run and a chance to add to it no colby jones gets it right back offensive glass and a foul will send miles to the line that's, that's what he does he rebounds knows where to be without fouling i just love the activity look at this unselfishness by the huskies who some of these players including jackson who and, and for Xavier as well, some of these freshmen have not known another student on their campus besides their teammates. So there's a lot going on. And let's remember, I know they're 6'9", 220, and they're long and they run and jump. These are babies. These are children. These are someone's babies. And we have to remember that, remind ourselves that they're, they're really just kids trying to navigate all these things. That's another young buck, although he redshirted last year, the freshman Deontay Miles from nearby Walton, Kentucky. And that stops the 8-0 run, but Xavier has enough field goal in three and a half minutes. Better defended by UConn those last three minutes, but also more one-on-one -on -one that Xavier's been trying to do on their own. Three-pointer knocked down for Isaiah Whaley, so all of a sudden a slow start, but now UConn's hit their last three. That was the shot that I talked about him taking a couple of plays ago. Why not? 15 seconds, go ahead and knock that down. Not yeah. the best three-point shooter on the team, but he has the ability. Yeah, 36 percent. He's only shot a dozen of them, but that guy can't hit the three. Free man, but he's too strong with it. And again, with the injuries, Whaley and Martin both twisting ankles in the last couple of days, but thankfully for Coach Hurley, able to go here this afternoon. Here's a cook, a cook. That one almost accidentally got knocked up and in, and then Polly made sure it went down. I love it. 
be aggressive offensively. You don't have to wait until that shot clock gets to eight or seven or six because you have the length to go rebound that ball, and they are first in the conference in offensive rebounds at 13 a game. A 12 to 1 run right now for Connecticut. Mm. And a good bucket inside for Fremantle. He becomes the first player as a double figure. He's just so talented, this kid. If you put someone slower on him, he puts it on the floor. Someone weaker, he puts his back to him. He stretches you out. If you put a big guy on him who blocks shots, he'll take it at three point line. Really is a tough matchup. Coaching staff loves him. A captain is a sophomore. And I think that we are finding out that a cook, a cook is a darn good basketball player. It's another layer of, of how it's been so difficult for coaches during this time. Now, the Cook hasn't really played, so now Travis still has to figure out, okay, we have to go off a video from him from last year. But guys have gotten better. And clearly a Cook has gotten better. <laughs> An offensive foul there on Odom. Uh, take a look where, where Zach Fremantle is. That's not going to get it done. A Cook's going to come to here. You can't drag it, I understand, but Cole picks the ball up. So there's no reason for you to, to have cement on your feet standing in that paint when a cook steps out. How tough is this, though, for Xavier? They don't really have a scouting report on a cook, a cook, right? Sometimes you got to just go play basketball, Brandon. <laughs> Coach said, listen, you, you got to use your abilities. You know, you played this game long enough, go play basketball. R.J. Cole. Missing badly, he did hit one earlier. You also have to be a quick study, though. When you see a guy knocks a couple down, you yeah, might, you don't want to, want to guard yeah, him. Yeah, you might want to just <laughs> get a little closer to him. But three games and just two points for a Cook a Cook into today. He's already got eight. Fremantle, no with the left hand. one and that is Brian Griffin still in COVID protocol the senior transfer but everybody else for Travis Steele good to go yeah Mercy College Brad is he's one of those guys that Xavier has had he's the, the last 10 years tough under the glass rebounder physical you don't have to run anything for him you know he's going to give you his complete full effort RJ Cole hitting his second field goal but Travis Steele said he'd love to have Brian Griffin because he thinks UConn is the most physical team in the Big East. And to your point, Donnie, Brian Griffin, one of those tough physical characters. Great pass. And some hesitation, C.J. Wilcher. Well, they, they got away from the, the ball movement a little bit, Xavier. And you, know, you can credit UConn's defense. More communication, better communication. But that saved your basketball in a nutshell right there. That ball swings. Every guy looks towards the basket, not necessarily to score, but to see if anyone else is open. Another three-pointer, Tyler Polly. So four triples for UConn. And Donnie, that equals the number they hit Wednesday against Providence when they were just four of 20 from deep. Scruggs can't get it. And through the hands of Jackson. And we've got immediate timeout. Tyler Polly, six nine. They called this a two on the floor, and they're going to keep it that way. They may, maybe if Brandon God wasn't getting so much money, we could have another camera in this building and we could get a better angle, but... I, I don't know who's giving you your information, Donnie, but... <laughs> Just one more camera, that's all, Brandon. Come on. Be a team player. Oh. Xavier started out hot from deep, but they missed their last three after being three of four. Jackson had it taken away from Scruggs. The senior ripping it from the freshman. And then Scruggs somehow kept it into Wiltshire. And Wiltshire, the freshman from Plainfield, New Jersey, buries it. Jackson getting a little bit of uh, <laughs> that Scruggs medicine. Scruggs, I've been here four years, man. You don't put that ball in front of me and think you're going to get away with it. And pays it off at the other end. Well, Wiltshire is, according to Travis Steele, the best shooter that he saw nationwide in the 2020 class. 
He hasn't taken many early, but he's been effective. Offensive rebound again for Connecticut. That's five of them in the first half already. Sonogo off the mark. Yeah, Wilcher, we'll another one of those players for Xavier that can catch, shoot it off the catch, can shoot it off the off the bounce. Fremantle, no. Tough one. His dribble almost took him away from the basket and got front end there. Probably should have just powered through, try to get a foul. And a bucket for R.J. Cole. Well, R.J. Cole last game off the bench for the first time. Dan Hurley said, I'm trying to send him a message, and he's been very active here. He already has seven. I just like how UConn is taking early opportunities and not, not waiting for that clock to get too low. I mean, they're just, and that, it, it, now you have opportunities yep. like that. And you feel good about yourselves. The team comes together. You're on the road. I mean, Donnie, I can only remember a few times they've let that shot clock get down really far. And that's been their M.O. That's why you see a team that plays, you know, a little bit slower in terms of pace because of that shot clock, but not today. Take your opportunities when they're there. You don't get them a lot. Scruggs keeping the pivot foot alive, but the shot blocked by Sonogo. He had five blocks last time against Providence. Cole's got to put that ball on the ground. He's got Kunkel in front of him, no one at the rim. Use your speed. That was all set up by Scruggs. Fremantle with a flush. Zach Fremantle with a dozen. until next year, but then I would be scared to see what next year brings with how good he's looked here today. So Xavier brings out a little pressure. UConn able to beat it here up four with 3.30 remaining in the half. And that pressure is just to take some time off the clock, look up 15 seconds, and it also allows Xavier to get into that 2-3 zone, change up the look. Here's Cole, seven points in his second game off the bench. Across the way to Gaffney, who fills it up. Yeah, I, I love the, the serviceable guards that Hurley has. Really good players that can come in. They don't make a lot of mistakes. They can stretch the defense out. Gaffney's one of those guys, and he'll get after it on the defensive end. He had 20 a couple of games ago against Ooh. Seton Hall, and there's the backdoor lob for Fremantle. That was a tremendous play call off of a made basket. I mean, that, that's probably what allowed Xavier to get set up in that. Taking it out of bounds. Travis Steele yells the play out. That was awesome. Already 14 for Fremantle. A guy that Travis Steele discovered by accident on the recruiting trail a couple of years ago. Free throws coming up for R.J. Cole. Just, just take a look. Here's Fremantle right here. He's going to come down this way. But what happens is, this is like, Brandon, I know you live in a penthouse. Everyone's right. looking here. So you don't know about a backyard. Everyone takes care of their front yard. You got to worry about the backyard. And when you live in a penthouse, you don't have to worry about a yard. But for me, I, I take care of both the front and the back. <laughs> you kind of have to worry about the backyard. That means, hey, listen, back screen coming. The guy who's in that far weak side corner, you got to sneak in a little bit. Maybe just bump Fremantle as he rolls to the basket. Still haven't gotten an invite, he, he, you know. Well, you're not. You there. keep just... talking to me like this, you're never going to get an invite. I'm, so I'm sorry I told people you live in a penthouse. I know you're <laughs> private. Your private life private. I'm sorry. Folks, it's far from true. RJ Cole, the red shirt junior, the transfer, knocks it down, and he has nine. UConn up seven. 
Travis Steele's club, they've only played six Big East games because of those three COVID pauses. Got off to the 14-5 start, struggling since. That's no good from Carter, but a tap out keeps it alive. A little push in the back there. Yep, they're going to get Fremantle. Okay, we have a, a terrific officiating crew today. We, we really do. Guys who, you know, I, I know people think, oh, when they don't blow the whistle a lot, yes. And, and when you don't know they're there, yes. But they're guys who, each one of these guys, they teach the players. If they make a call, they explain to them. They don't just walk away, put their hand up, say, yeah. I don't want to hear about it. Yeah, Mike Stevens, Lamar Simpson, Wally Ritecki, three guys that have been around a long time. Haven't had a lot of fouls, just nine combined in this game. That was the first on Fremantle. Fading away, tough shot. And a strong rebound by Fremantle. Speaking of fouls, there's one on Tyrese Martin. Tyrese Martin is so powerful and, and has the foot speed. He can give Scruggs a little bit of room. Scruggs is not going to stop and pull up on you like Steph Curry. So give him a little bit more space. Scruggs is a player that wants to get into your body, use his strength, try to get low, and now force the help to come. So give him a little bit of room. You're 6'7 if you're Martin. You can contest if he steps back. Martin becomes the first player with two fouls. He goes to the bench. In and out for Fremantle. Cole up ahead to Polly. Cole whips it across the way. Gaffney with his feet spread apart. And a foul is going to go against UConn's Isaiah Whaley. And yeah, not a great shot by Gaffney. Anytime you have to do a, a, a basically a drag dribble or side dribble to get space and then your legs are that spread apart, you know you're one, you're off balance, but two, you got to look to see what's behind on the swing pass. Put it on the floor, get to the rim. No shot blocker at that rim. Here's Scruggs. He's been held in check. Two points. He does have five assists. Back door to Johnson. Johnson, nice spin. And he got fouled by Cole. I think Johnson was surprised by the pass from Fremantle. Take, take a look. I think Fremantle knew what he was doing. But Johnson looks up and the ball almost hits him in the lap. You know, I mentioned, though, that Scruggs has been pretty quiet with the two points. And again, Donnie, he does have five assists, but they're going to need more offensively from their senior leader. Well, you, you just have to now go in at halftime and say, okay, where, where's the adjustment? What, UConn has done this, this, and this really well. How do we adjust to that? And that's where you lean on your upperclassmen. But the crowd wanted a turnover there on a cook a cook inbounding the ball. Cole wide open. Nobody was near him. I'll tell you what, you keep sagging back. The Huskies are, are telling Xavier, I am not your cat. We have the dogs. <laughs> And R.J. Cole, who got put on the bench last game, has received the message. He's got a dozen. Now Fremantle in some trouble. Finding Johnson. Short. Boy, every rebound is a battle. Hook shot up and in for Zach Fremantle. Final seconds of the half. Fremantle has 16. Here's Cole again. And he can't get it. And that's how the first 20 comes to a close. So Xavier got up nine early, but Connecticut with a strong first 20 minutes. They came out early. They fought. They didn't worry about who wasn't playing UConn. They were focused on who UConn took advantage. And Xavier needs somebody other than number 32 to come to the party. He's got half of the points for the Musketeers. Well, they have to get back to the way they started this game. Moving the basketball, playing on selfish basketball, but now that run your stuff to completion. Sometimes you start to look for those shortcuts because it becomes easy a few times. Well, they go right back to that free man. Oh, well, but great defense by Whaley. And that's the difference as well. To start the game, it was Sonogo 
on Fremantle. He struggled. But here's Scruggs. He only took three shots in the first half and had two points and misses the three there. Great Euro step and a strong finish from Martin. Love that kid, too. He's got great athleticism. Transfer from URI. Does a little bit of everything. On the other end, Nate Johnson. That's what he does. He knocks down shots. Yeah, how about that? Let's... Even on a make, let's just try to get down, take the best available shot, and not allow UConn to get set up in their defense. Two threes now for the transfer from Gardner Webb. Here's Martin backing down Johnson, and he takes advantage with that height size that he has. We've seen that a couple times today, shooting over smaller players. UConn has that advantage with Polly, obviously Jackson and Martin. Yeah, so many rim protectors. Kunkel, nice kick out to Scruggs. But his off afternoon continues. Uh -oh. well, you gotta finish. find Andre Jackson. In transition, getting out ahead of the defense. I love the leak out, especially when you know that your team has that rebound secured. I built a career off of that, Brandon. I see Danielle Marshall has that rebound. Pew, I'm out of there. <laughs> Danielle and Donnie, quite the combo. There's a three out of Bunkel, so the offense for both sides, good start for the first two minutes of the second half. Yeah. Yeah. Keep in mind with Andre Jackson, too, by the way, we talked about it, but this is just his seventh college game, <laughs> this kid out here. But he is some athlete. Freshman from Amsterdam, New York, in the Albany area with a prized recruit. Bad pass there, Tyrese Martin with a turnover. Speaking of Andre Jackson. Yeah, you gotta, here he is up here, I love it, but but the ball's getting secured underneath. Good look ahead. That's just a simple one. I, I, I mean, he'll, he'll give you a little more flair as he gets, you know, more games under his belt. Well, Dan Hurley said he's turning into a great leader, and he's been kind of the vocal guy in practice in the absence of book night. You don't really think about that from a freshman, but a good thing for UConn's future is R.J. Cole forces his way to the basket. And Tyrese Martin, one of those guys who knows the voice of Dan Hurley, comes over from URI, another leader off the wrong foot, and then could have taken the 15-foot jumper, decides, you know what, Johnson? about five six inches on him i'm just going to take him down low and shoot over the top he mentioned his time at uri he played for dan hurley's assistant who took over for mm -hmm. dan hurley david cox and then he said look i loved it at uri i wanted a bigger stage uconn providing that for him and he's again he's comfortable with that that kind of knowledge and, and maybe not directly dan hurley's voice before he got here but the same message the same coaching tendencies of course, Dan Hurley, six years at URI, two NCAA tournaments before coming over to be the head coach of the UConn Huskies. And one thing that Dan Hurley's been vocal about this year, Donnie, he said, look, the AAC was a good league, but this is a big step up that we're finding out this year. And it makes you elevate your level of play, obviously, but it also helps your recruiting. You know, he, he, no one talks a lot about... You know what conferences you're in and who, what kids you get, but you know, let's face it, man. This this league sells itself. You tell a kid you're going to be playing Villanova on a Friday night, and then oh by the way, Sunday we're going to be playing Xavier. Then we're going to play Georgetown. Then we okay, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it, it doesn't have to be a hard sell in this conference. And it's a great marriage for both sides. UConn belongs in the Big East, and I think they bolster what this conference is and wants to be. I'm just proud of obviously growing up in this conference of the job that Val Ackerman has done before UConn came back in. And when there was the realignment, uh, you know, just having the, the wherewithal and the belief to say, you know what, we're going to start this conference, non football schools, and, and we're going to shine. And by the way, we're going we're to win two national titles yes. <laughs> in that time. I mean, thank you, Villanova, Jay Wright. But it's, it really is terrific vision, but I'm proud of the way that the Big East has continued to excel and be one of the greatest conferences in this, in this country. Connecticut trying to get back to their first NCAA tournament since 2016. Oh. Fremantle, he started 0-3 here in the second half. Tell you, it, there was a guy who played George Mikan. And it's just a little mic and drill underneath. It's 
Pat Holmes, left hand. left hand, right hand. Bums act free mantle. I mean, he's missed so many bunnies. He's doing everything to get himself in great position. He's just leaving them a little short. I'd be doing that after the game. I'm not missing these anymore. Each team with six turnovers, and both of these sides average just above 12 a game. Really good offense, really good. Wow, how did Conkle find <laughs> Fremantle there? The offense is, you think the defense is good because Conkle stretched out to the coach's box over in front of Xavier's bench, but that means someone's got to be open, and that was Zach Fremantle. Conkle with a great pass. He's the Belmont transfer who's from nearby just across the river in Hebron, Kentucky. He didn't have high major looks out of high school, but lit it up last year at Belmont and transferred in, and they're happy to have him. And Xavier will get the basketball back that way off of Adama Sadogo. This is really good. Two defenders. They're going to string him out top of your screen. Look at that. Underneath. Mercy of what's going on around the rest of college basketball. And so are those schools. Yes, in a, in a perfect world, you'd want to be playing those schools, but not everyone has openings for that. It's tough. That's exactly right, because everybody else is in conference play, and yeah. they're not as worried as Xavier is about getting an extra right. game in. The good news is when you play in the Big East, you're going to get a lot of quad one and quad two opportunities the rest of the way. And they're coming off that pause their last game, January 30th against Butler. They've had 10 games postponed this year, seven of the last eight of the Xavier Musketeers. Great defensive play by Whaley there, getting a piece of that jump hook from Fremantle. Harden with a drive, another rejection at the rim. I don't know if that was Sonogo or Whaley, but both were there. And speaking of rejections, Kunkel from behind. Well, Whaley's one of those guys who was questionable. Well, that's a little bit of a block party, as they call it. Two guys got their hand on that, and that was Whaley's second one in that possession. But had a little tweak in practice. Leads the team in block shots. Another really good player that may be underutilized at times, but you saw him step out, Whaley, block shots, he gives it to you at both ends. And Connecticut now with five block shots, and they lead the Big East in that category with 5.3 a game, so right around there again. Here is Whaley, lets it go, and knocks it down. They gave him the shot, he took it. Make me look good, young fella. So this is a, a team in UConn that... I, I'm done listening to, well, Book Knight's out, he's hurt, we're a different team. No, they have enough on this team to compete. We're seeing that today. Free battle with the answer. He now has 21. But, Donnie, I'm totally with you on this UConn team, especially with, again, Jackson and a Cook out there. The question is, can they find the wins down the stretch? Eight and five, five and five in league play, and they've lost four of their last five. Here is Jackson, way too much. Rebound is Scruggs, he pushes. He's had a quiet night offensively, and he loses the ball here. Great job retreating by the guys in the blue uniform. Sometimes you kind of lag back when you miss a shot. Everyone got back into the paint, but that's another opportunity, Xavier. They're really good in transition, too, and they've missed a couple of those turnovers. You need communication. When you're dribbling the ball, you need someone yelling. Some teams yell wolf. Uh, they, they have different colors they might yell to, to let you know someone's coming in from behind. And in an environment like this, you should be able to hear everything going on around you. It does feel different, though, doesn't it, just to have 900 fans here versus all the games that we've done with nobody in attendance. It just gives it a little bit of juice. And the players love it. You know, especially in, in a building like this where the fans are, they, they live, eat, sleep, save your basketball. Oh, yeah. This is normally one of the loudest venues, maybe one of the most yeah. underrated venues in college Agreed. basketball. Agreed. Colby Jones giving it off to Scruggs. Scruggs just one of five from the field. On the baseline, Wilcher. Moving the ball around. Shot clock at five in the corner. There is Wilcher. Fremantle gets fouled trying to stick it back in. He has been the offense with 21 to Xavier's 43. And that's the problem when you're in a little bit of a zone. 
when that ball goes up, you're not looking for the guy you've been guarding in man to man. You're looking for a guy wearing a uniform that's a different color than yours, just to simplify it. That makes it easy, right? Yeah, that's it. You don't have to find a number, a shoe size, a shoe. Just look, look for the different, different color uniform. That's it. <laughs> Zach Freeman, one of the more interesting things is that he's afraid of spiders, but his favorite superhero is Spider-Man. I don't know what that says, but there you go. Oh, a little conflict of interest there a little <laughs> bit, in my opinion. You see the nickname Baby Love, so he's from Jersey, but he used to go to Manhattan to play to Rucker, in Rucker Park, and they have DJs at Rucker Park, and they say he kind of plays like Kevin Love, so they call him Baby Love. There you go. <laughs> Tough awesome. kid, though, right? Yeah. I mean, when Travis Steele loves him. A cook, a cook, back in off the bench, off the mark, and there is Fremantle with a rebound. He's got eight of those. Chance for Xavier to get something good here. Try to get the momentum back. Another turnover from Scruggs. And through the hands of Whaley, and then Scruggs tried to save it. And it went off of him. A little premeditated on Xavier's end. He'll be trying to wait for that screen to come on the pick and roll. And then on this end, just in a hurry, he might not need to make that pass, but Scruggs getting back, trying to give up his body to save that, wanted that back. I appreciate that he went after it, but I don't think that Willie would have gotten to it if Scruggs no. didn't die for it, but he's a competitor. Yeah, no coach is going to tell you, hey, you should have let that go right. when you're laid out on the floor. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, UConn's had this lead. Entire second half. Again, early on, it was Xavier by nine. And another rejection, but a foul underneath. That's all Jones using that size and that strength against Cole to try to turn the corner, forcing the issue. RJ Cole's got his hands up from the official. But I, I you know, that the hands up thing is, is a little overrated. Because a lot of times, as a player, you're not fouling with your hands unless it's obvious out on the perimeter. Your body, body up. Yeah. It's legs, it's thighs, it's your butt. You know what I mean? It's not. So the hands up, that just, it upsets the rest. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. So just, just drop them down. You need those guys on your side. Colby Jones, first point today, the freshman from Birmingham. He's missed six games so far this year due to COVID protocol. And really started to blossom before the last shutdown. Travis Steele said it didn't hurt anybody. It probably hurt Colby Jones. They're trying to get him back into rhythm. Top of the arc. Set play, but missing Tyler Polly. And there is Jones on the rebound. And here's the freshman on the other end once again drawing the contact. Colby Jones being aggressive. So on the last trip, goal with the right hand. Stand low, this time with the left hand. He's just... R.J. Cole trying to stay in front. I didn't see a, a, a huge issue there. There was a bump. But, you know, the official on the baseline had the angle. He made the call. Now, Colby Jones missed the last game against Butler, so before this, the last time he played, he hit the game winner against Providence on January the 10th. It was an emotional game for him because two days prior, he got the news that his grandfather, Robert, had passed away from COVID-19, so that was a, a kind of a bittersweet moment. It was special for him to hit the game-winning shot to honor his grandfather, but the loss is still sticking with the young man, the young freshman from Birmingham. Went to his teammate Wilcher. Fremantle, two more. And that prompts a Connecticut timeout as we are tied at 49. So awesome. So sad, but awesome at the same time. Now, right after the game, I mentioned he texted his mom. And he said, that was for Papa. <laughs> and a credit to Adam Baum of the Cincinnati Inquirer for the great story on that as well.
So all tied up at 49 here after UConn had expanded it to their largest lead. Xavier has scored the last nine points. Slipping through. Why not the shot? I was just going to say Gaffney put it up and in. And now we have the under 12 media timeout. I think Dan Hurley's telling him that, Donnie. He's saying she's yes. from, from his neck to his wrist. <laughs> he has a way of just kind of slowly killing you with his eyes. Yeah. He? <laughs> He's got that look. This has turned out to be a heck of a game here. And, and one that probably UConn needs a little bit more. But Xavier feels because they haven't played like we were talking about many games that they need this win as well. Yeah, I, I don't think if Xavier drops this, they would say it's a bad loss. But without question, UConn's going to say that's a big win and much needed, not just for the resume, but for them emotionally, psychologically. It can show not just the players, but the coaches that we really do have a good team. And once book night comes back, we're going to be even better. And yep. yeah, then that's the gravy on top. Yeah. He was eyeing a mid-February return. Obviously, that's where we are now. He's just waiting to get the clearance from the surgeon who operated on his elbow. But he has been practicing book night. Late shot clock, desperation heave off the mark from Johnson. Well, they play Tuesday. I, that's what I'm eyeing, is that Tuesday. Because it's about six weeks from when it happened. Yeah, for book night. Yeah, for book night. Offensive board, Martin. Count the bucket and the foul. Tyrese Martin flexing his muscles at Cincy. I, I really like this kid. His size, his toughness. Look at him just hanging around, hanging around. Keeps it alive. Goes up with two hands. I think that's what's most impressive about the way UConn rebounds is that they go up with two hands. You know, good rebounding teams, great rebounding teams. Go up with two, grab it, come down. Never just one off balance, and he shows you there. He can pay it off. And again, this is a team that you, you can't out jump. They're just so long. You got to put a body on them. Nine offensive rebounds now for the Huskies, and they're back up three. Fremantle. Too strong, and there's Martin again. He's tough. 6'6, 215. He's built solid. So is this guy Whaley in the lane? Up and in, and the foul again. Now you can see why Travis Steele says UConn is the toughest, most physical team in the conference. I really believe UConn was just lacking confidence. And, and again, when you read papers and you hear about James Booknight and how good he is and how they're not as good a team without him, look, you know that. He's a great player. That doesn't mean you're chopped liver. Yep. These players have worked their tails off on both sides to get to where they are. Just You, you need people to believe in you and, and most importantly believe in yourselves. And UConn is showing that today. They are. Now back to a six-point lead, which said to play. Now where does Xavier get the answer? Jones slips it back door. Johnson, or not Johnson, mm. rather, Dwan Odom with a bucket. See the athleticism there. Elevates and shoots over the defense. That's a tough place to catch it, too, especially for a guard. You're behind the basket. You don't want to step out of bounds. First bucket for Odom, another freshman. Holly, shot fake, move to the left and bury it. Beautiful. Holly hasn't touched it in a while, so you almost kind of knew that that thing was going up. <laughs> but I like the side dribble, create a little space. He's already 6'8, 6'9. Hard to get to. He had been struggling shooting from three, but he's hit a couple big ones here. And there is another bucket from Freeman. He has 26 now, Donnie. I mean, come on, you, you got a kid at, at that size. He's 6'9", 230, moving to his left, shoots across his body with the right. Great body control. Career high, by the way, 28. He's two away. In the lane, finger roll, no for Gaffney. A little bit too much butter on the roll right at the end. <laughs> it looked pretty, though. Yeah. Here's Fremantle again. Why not go back to that well? Well, that's why. Rejection from Whaley. Tell you what, against these UConn defenders, you, you better have your feet together. Because if you don't, they're going to make you pay for it or make you eat the ball. They have six block shots. 
And on the other end, the block, but then the missed three from Whaley. Polly, another offensive board. And Polly driving. And Wiltshire tried to take the charge. No call. Colby Jones with a full head of steam. And there is a blocking foul. On his way to the basket. Yeah, I see what Zach Fremantle was doing here. Nice dribble. Gets it to the front of the rim. Thinks, oh, I can go with the left. But you have to be in a good position with your base against shot blockers because you have to go up one to be able to challenge the body to body if you're not going to be able to get over top and there was no way with his back to a defender he had good balance and if there's one guy you don't want to challenge it's isaiah whaley he <laughs> yeah. now has four blocks today 40 on the season and shot blockers the beauty of of being a shot blocker is it you know it comes in all shapes and sizes you know you've gone at machine to beat years ago 17 to block some shots they've always had terrific shot blockers going all the way back to daniel marshall mecca old before they've had some good guys but and they're all built differently you know whaley would probably be a shooting guard in the nba <laughs> With that body, but just has a knack for timing and those block shots. There's 40 blocks for him as a team. They have just over 70 this year, so he has well over half of them for Connecticut. The Husky lead is four inside of eight. Here's Cole. Buries the three. Three three-pointers for R.J. Cole. Have to play him differently coming off of that screen. This kid scored 1,510 points in two seasons at Howard. you, you got to know where he is. I mean, that is a guy who can score the ball. And another block shot this time by Martin. Cole also has six assists. He's been tremendous. There's a kick. And we get immediate timeout here in Cincinnati. Oh, R.J. Cole, big-time scorer, lefty, knows what he's doing from trying to figure out how to guard him. And again, Travis Steele saw him by accident at a Peach Jam AAU event in Atlanta, was going to watch other players in the summer of 2018, and saw him and said, who's that kid? He Googled him, found out that mostly mid to low majors were yeah. recruiting him, and said, I want that guy, and a couple of days later, he was committed. Yeah, Penn State was one of the bigger schools that... that wanted him but you're right there weren't a lot of schools at least big name schools that or brand name at least that were recruiting him and he's from Teaneck New Jersey and he was vocal about wanting to play in the Big East nice finish Tyrese Martin off the spin great body control avoiding the charge and this matches UConn's largest lead Fremantle, here he is again, this time off the mark, rebound down to Cole. Remember, it was tied at 49, and UConn has taken over again. Fremantle, though, great defense. Kunkel leads the break, mm. and Cole playing a little soccer. I think that's the one where when you have a smaller player retreating defensively, you throw the ball up, especially to a guy as athletic as Jones. The bounce pass looks nice, and it's fun, but... You want to keep that ball away from the defender. That's a, that's a lob, in my opinion. Xavier inbounds off the kick. Fading away. Oh, tough shot. Scruggs ball into the floor. And he remains quiet. Down eight, two points, one of six. This guy's made a lot of noise. He thought he got fouled. No whistle. Look at Sonogo. Gets his own miss. And kicks it out. You guys got to pay attention to that clock. They're right at 10. With six minutes on the big clock. R.J. Cole swiped away. So Scruggs finally gets his first field goal since the first minute of the game. And a timeout is taken by Xavier. Trying to claw back in. They're still down seven. Here and getting their guys not just prepared, but... Getting them in a mindset that we have to win every single game the rest of the way. He, he really is second to none when it comes to that. 
and they call March Izzo. It's That's January, it. February, Izzo, <laughs> April, you move on. That's yeah. he's so good when it gets into crunch time. Speaking of crunch time, Xavier backs against the wall here a little bit, down seven at home. Cole. RJ Cole is cold blooded. Give him 20. You just can't give him that space. And RJ Cole is doing a great job of stopping behind the screen. It's not just a ball screen, he stops behind. He's got the six assists as well. He's been filling it up. Uh, here you see the, the dribble handoff and another one he stops right behind just enough where Scruggs can't fight either either Scruggs has to fight on the high side or really do a, a better job of, of getting up into pole but that's just too much space and the six assists and one turnover he's by far and away their best ratio guy in that category 58 assists this year 30 turnovers for a team that and UConn that is a one-to-one -one assist to turnover ratio squad you see Paul Scruggs just four points today the season low is six and he misses the free throw UConn with their biggest lead Isaiah Whaley face up mid-range, drops it down. How about that? The little face, the jab, just to get your defender off balance a little, and now you elevate soon enough where you can't get a hand in your face. And I know Xavier's at a little bit of disadvantage with all the COVID pauses, but Donnie, this looks like a different Connecticut Husky team. I think on paper, coming into this game for Xavier, this would be the team that you'd want to play coming off of that break. A team that has lost four or five, they're without their star, and you're at home with fans in the building. I mean, it really was, and still is, there's plenty of time, a game set up for Xavier to, to have, at, you know, after the long pause. Uh, Book Knight watching and Connecticut putting on their best performance in a while if not maybe the entire season now can they hold on still 434 to go and a, a powerful offense that xavier can bring to the table you know, i call these games for a team like uconn game truthing meaning you can really only find out about who you really are in games you can see it all see things in practice but as soon as the lights come on the refs this is game truthing this is who you really really are on the road Lost four or five. How are you going to respond? The answer has been really good so far. <laughs> Tyrese Martin driving on the freshman, had it stripped. Six to shoot. And this is the problem they run into when they're under 10 seconds, UConn. It hasn't been a lot tonight, or today, excuse me. It's They don't really have a breakdown guy. You know, book night's usually that that guy and yeah they have some guys who can get get buckets but they don't have that the breakdown player Polly gives it out to Whaley just before the horn he can't get it now Scruggs spinning and that's a foul on Isaiah Whaley his second so we'll see if UConn can hang on. Xavier's had some second half frustration. Danny Hurley said our guys need to play with a high numbers for UConn and Xavier. I like that he, that Hurley has decided, you know what, whether it's sending a message or, or just mixing it up to bring RJ Cole off the bench. You know, sometimes it's hard to completely control an uncontrollable experiment, and that's what it's been for UConn since Book Knight has been out. And, and that's how you kind of just say, okay, I'm going to try this. Today, it, so far, it's working. You know, Cole is, doesn't have all the extra pressure of trying to run the team the entire game. He can go and look for his own game coming off the bench. Only the third time in his entire career that he started his career at Howard, but only the third time he's come off the bench. Here he is, trapped at midcourt, able to find a way to get it to Polly. You got to stay away from that little area over there where you where you clean your feet at the half court. You don't want to be over there picking the ball up. 
Cole slips it into Whaley. Offensive foul. The freshman taking the contact, Colby Jones. Again, it's all about that steal. Colby Cheese stepping in, <laughs> taking the charge. Just outside of the restricted area. Now the officials are discussing it. Oh. And officially, that is his nickname. So I'm not just calling him Colby Cheese. That would seem too obvious. That is actually his nickname. Now, were the feet outside? Looks like it from this vantage point. Maybe question on the, the right heel, possibly. And they do keep it with a charge. Yeah. Now, where did you find out that his nickname is Colby Cheese? You made that up, you Donnie. Gotta, no, Donnie, no, you made no, it no. up. <laughs> just just keep, write that in your notes, young fella. Hey? You may be able to use that one day. You got to dig. Dig deep. Oh, I know. And I, I know, know you I do. to tell you. You got to dig, you're, man. You're elbow deep in cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Back up jumper in and out for Kunkel and a rebound for UConn. Oh, was that the shot Xavier wanted there down I'm, nine? I'm all about you getting your finding your shot and being aggressive and getting your shot up But when you're down with about three minutes to play you have to run your stuff so many good things can happen including a basket Great drop off but Whaley had it knocked free Now Martin out to Cole. Here's the guy. Yes again a season high 23 for UConn, it's who's going to take that shot late game, and I think we know the answer to that. <laughs> For Xavier, I think they're searching a little bit. W where is it going to come from, and how are they going to get it this last two and a half minutes? Knocked out of bounds off of Xavier. UConn with its largest lead and the ball with two and a half minutes on the clock. You know, Travis Steele was worried about how his team would respond. Interestingly, they came out of the gate so good, but since then, they've been a little lethargic. But credit again to Connecticut. Yeah, you, you know, I always worry about the, the first five, eight minutes of the game to see how players' bodies respond. But I, I really think Xavier, they, they might have underestimated UConn. I mean, th there is something... There's a there's truth to recency bias and basically believing what you've seen recently and, and they've lost four out of five They're a team that's been searching their head coach has said don't know where the points are going to come from It's going to be a struggle for us and again players even players on the other team. They read that stuff so there may have been a little bit of that but You know, this is still a very good Xavier team without question and again, their first practice as a team is Thursday. Great feed, Martin with a finish, and all of a sudden that lead is 14 points. UConn has shared the ball maybe as well as they have all season. Now Scruggs nowhere to go. Awkward shot, offensive rebound, Johnson. Two more for Fremantle. So he ties his career high with 28, and then Travis Steele is going to take a timeout. Disparity between Cole and the Hurley family because he played for the Hall of Famer Bob Hurley senior at St. Anthony's which now is no longer a high school but three-year starter for him and now getting to play for son Dan at the college level good active hands Colby Jones almost got the steal and then a foul in the front court on Kunkel well that that situation there for Tyrese Martin is you got to ask the ref can I run can I run the baseline? If you can, then okay. Now you run to, to create a, a better angle. They got away with it. If you can't run now, it's your teammates who are on the floor to get themselves open. Still one more foul to give for Xavier. Martin just getting it into Whaley. Knock three, Scruggs. And then Scruggs is going to pick up the personals. He gets tangled with Jalen Gaffney. So I'm going to pick my nits again here. If you're going to catch that ball, you gave yourself more space from the line or go back further. You're just that half-court line works as a defender So an added defender for Xavier and, and if you're Whaley you have your dribble alive still But you can tell this isn't a, a UConn team that's had a lot of pressure Put on it in terms of full court half court. They're struggling trying to get this ball in bounds again. And again taken away Adam Kunkel up ahead Scruggs Finds Johnson, best three-point shooter on the floor. 
drive. Back to nine with 140. In the corner, Trapps almost turning it over again. And now they do break the press. And Xavier fouls, so that will put the Huskies in the bonus. <laughs> Just too congested down there. You need two guys uh, uh, in those corners, one guy taking it out of bounds, and then trying to get a guy to the middle of the floor. That's it. It's really not. As players, sometimes we make it so hard. This is great recognition. That's making it easy. Find the best shooter on the floor. Give him the ball. Great pass. Great recognition by Paul Scruggs. Johnson's hit three threes. He has 11, but will he and Fremantle's effort be enough? Right now, not looking good. Free throw knocked down for Tyler Polly, an 85% foul shooter. One of the last three Kevin Ollie recruits remaining. He, Isaiah Whaley, and Josh Carlton, who we have not seen here today. Another guy torn ACL. He's had to fight through that throughout his career. 75-64, Xavier. They need points in a hurry. Scruggs searching. Gives it off. Here's Kunkel. He'll pull. Awkward release. Air ball. And then Scruggs fumbles it out of bounds. I don't know if Kunkel, if that ball slipped or if Whaley got a piece of that. He was saying he got hit on the wrist, Donnie. Oh, of course. Watch this. That left wrist going up. Yep. Yeah, that's a... A foul right there. Now that was one of the rare misses from our veteran crew, and then the foul will send us the other way. Maybe a flight to catch? I don't know. I'm just, I'm just saying, <laughs> not saying what I'm saying. <laughs> no, we got good guys. They show a lot of care and love our officials. But for Xavier, they'll, they'll play again Tuesday against St. John's. Just two practices under their belt since that January 30th win against Butler. So Travis Steele said, look, after this one, we just need to get on the floor and practice, but they're not going to have much time to do that. The guys, I'm sure, Donnie, they just want to play games at this without point. question. You know the season's really short now for you, and, and you know you can't afford another setback. Scruggs hits the three, so that makes it an eight-point affair. Much better job there of beating the press by Gaffney. Get a guy, break into the corners, try to get that ball to the middle of the floor. That's all it is. This would put UConn back above 500. So Xavier, just their seventh conference game, everybody else has played double digits in league play except for DePaul. They've played nine games coming into today. Free throw off the mark. So, Xavier, a little light at the end of the tunnel. Defend without fouling is the key for UConn. Easy flush. Fremantle. New career high with 30. Now they foul there. 42.2 remaining. I was found that this was a time as a player to not be in a hurry to get the ball in. The most important thing, the priority, is to get guys in their positions. So you almost let the ball bounce. Maybe if the official hasn't gotten it, maybe you throw it to the official. Then you walk out of bounds if you're inbounding the ball. Don't be in a hurry to get it inbounds because you have to have confidence that your press breaker is better than what is going to happen on the other side. And taking care of it is the key. You're going to get fouled. Secure the ball. Well, this is the guy Xavier wanted to put at the line 65% and Martin Bad miss on the first one to my point. You, you, you get your right guys get in the ball. Get fouled, But you got to get him in their positions Two possession game. This is not done Scruggs to initiate Fremantle he's gonna drive inside again reverse No Offensive rebound but Jones couldn't keep it alive for Xavier and then a foul with 27.7 remaining. Ooh. If that went, things would have gotten really interesting. And it's a, a great read by Fremantle. He says no one's there, but he went off the wrong foot and might have taken off a little too far. You know, he's almost outside of the paint on the left side under that box. And that's what happens when you're playing against long players. You're trying to get that thing up fast. Previous career high, 28, averaging 15 on the season. Special player. Boy, oh boy. 
Now this is one of the guys you want at the line and RJ Cole Tomlin knocks it down 24 points No power five offers out of high school he chose Howard over Boston and Monmouth as you mentioned just absolutely lit it up at Howard and then had a lot of suitors and ended up at Connecticut. This is the second though. Scruggs as we approach 20 seconds. Johnson, he's the guy fading away. Yes, my goodness, can that kid shoot the basketball? Down to four with 16.8 remaining. Timeout, we'll take it with him and be right back to the Queen City. Had that game against Providence. It, even this is a different it's a different UConn team even than that game. Yeah. I mean, they just are. They, their body language is so much better. And even before we got to 17 seconds to go, they, they just looked like a different team after they fought their way back after the huge deficit to start. But I think Xavier again fouled the guy that they wanted to there in Tyrese Martin. He's not a horrible free throw shooter, no. 66%, but if you look at the options on the floor... Well, that's always kind of the guy if you if you think about okay who is our you know, use, using the word lightly our worst free throw shooter let's have him take the ball out of bounds and then because they're going to foul immediately two shots there you go he does get that one to rattle home well, at some point though you got to tell you got you got to make free throws man <laughs> come on wait, let's get out of here let's make your free throws and let's go home 10 of 15 Xavier 12 of 18 at the line and Whaley Knocks down both, so 6.16 seconds. And now Xavier needing a miracle. Scruggs, stop and pop. No. Johnson couldn't grab it. UConn rebound, and now they can smell it. With just seven seconds remaining, UConn is going to get a much-needed Big East Road victory. Most people thought if this game was played in the 60s, that's where Connecticut would win it, but they have a chance here to post 80 and get the victory. Look, I, and I don't think UConn did anything extraordinary. I think they shared the ball. They, you know, it's not like they made 23 pointers. They played the game the way I assume UConn staff has wanted them to play all season, with or without Book Knight. Yeah, if this is the UConn team you see for the rest of February and into March, look out. And they do put up 80 points. Final seconds. Kunkel won't matter. Only in the stat sheets and no good. And UConn gets their second quad one win of the season. They come into Cincinnati and take care of the Musketeers 80-72. to 72.